Stephanie Catalano, licensed clinical social worker, personal development author, life coach, public speaker, and the host of the Mindful Makeover podcast. I am committed to bringing you insightful conversations that will help you move forward in your life, turn your dreams into reality, feel good, and live your life on purpose with purpose. If you're ready for healing, empowerment, and transformation, you're in the right place, so let's do this. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Mindful Makeover Podcast. As always, I'm so happy to be here with you all and truly grateful for each of you. Thank you for tuning in to connect with me, it means the world. Last week, one of my beautiful listeners wrote me and asked if I would do an episode on self-sabotage. So here it is, that's what I'm going to talk about today. And thank you for suggesting this topic. It's definitely an important one and I think one that we can all relate to. Self-sabotage is when we consciously or subconsciously take steps to prevent ourselves from achieving our goals, moving forward in our life, and experiencing success, however you define success success, and whatever success would look like to you. Self-sabotage behavior can show up in any area of one's life, whether it be in relationships, in careers, or personal or professional goals such as weight loss or submitting your resume and cover letter to that dream job you want so badly. Self-sabotage is typically a pattern that's learned and it's important to remember that every behavior and every pattern makes sense within the context where you originally learned it. For example, let's say you struggle with procrastination and this has been a barrier to you accomplishing goals in your life. If you were to spend some time becoming curious about your procrastination, by exploring where this behavior comes from or where it was first learned, you might trace it back to your childhood where perhaps you grew up in a home where your parents or caregivers weren't fully available and maybe they weren't the type of parents to care too much about your homework. They didn't sit down and do homework with you. They didn't ask you, did you do your homework? So in other words, throughout your childhood, you were able to get away with not following through on schoolwork or homework because you didn't have parents or primary caregivers who were holding you accountable, or who were there to make sure you knew that it's actually important to do, to do things such as your homework and follow through with turning in assignments. So now here you are as an adult and you're procrastinating or not, or not following through. And you could see that it actually makes sense if you view the behavior in the context of, of you being a child, right? Because If you didn't learn that, or if you had parents who procrastinated, or if you had parents who didn't follow through with you, then how could you learn to follow through? You can't simply because you learned otherwise or you learned different. And all behaviors are adaptive. They all make sense. They all serve us. They all help us at one point until they become maladaptive and they no longer serve us and they no longer help us. Another example is let's say you have a history of emotional trauma starting in childhood, and here you are in an intimate relationship with someone who mistreats you and maybe even abuses you emotionally and verbally. You might so badly want to leave the relationship, but deep down you don't believe you're worth more, so you stay despite the pain it's causing you. And you prevent yourself from it, from expressing your emotions, showing up authentically, speaking your truth, and maybe even prevent yourself from making a plan to leave the relationship. Perhaps you even find yourself justifying his, her, or their behavior and coming up with excuses such as, I'm too old to start over, I'm 35 or I'm 45, nobody's gonna wanna date me, I'm too old to have to date again, or maybe you find yourself minimizing the seriousness of the abuse and perhaps even justifying their behavior and maybe even blaming yourself for their behavior. Another example we often see is within individuals who struggle with addiction. Some of you know that I serve as the clinical director at Agape Treatment Center in addition to running my business, Mindful Living. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen individuals finally on track with their recovery. They're on the road to success. They're doing really well. They're finally at a place where they're repairing relationships with loved ones. They're making amends to people and, and, and people are accepting their amends. They're releasing their resentments. They're, they're truly on the track of doing well and feeling good for the first time. 
and they're right there, let's say at the 90 day mark of clean time, the six month mark, even right before they're about to get their year of clean time, and then what happens? They relapse. Often this is a result because the core belief of I'm not good enough shows up again. The core belief of I don't deserve to feel good shows up again. And perhaps sometimes they even have the, the thought of, you know, this is too good to be true and I'm sure something bad will eventually happen. So rather than quote unquote waiting for something bad to happen, they relapse because then they were the ones who made the bad happen before bad could happen to them. And you could see how in some way the pattern of self of self sabotage or self sabotaging behaviors keeps a person safe, especially on an emotional level, because even though the behavior is hurting them or the behaviors, right? Multiple behaviors are hurting them or holding them back. In some way, there's a sense of knowing there's a sense of comfort because it's familiar. And even though they don't like it, they're getting frustrated with their, with themselves. They're ready to break free from these patterns, these cycles. There's a part that wants to stay the same because in staying the same, it's predictable. They know what's going to come. There's a sense of control. And that's really, really, really important to understand. Again, that all behaviors typically were once helpful. They make sense. They served a purpose. They kept us safe. But what happens is sometimes the behaviors that once kept us safe and served a purpose, they no longer help us and they actually become harmful. And so there's a number of reasons why people self-sabotage. Some of them is because they have the belief that they're not worth it. So deep down, you know, if you don't believe you're worth something, you could see how a person would continue to take steps that would prevent them from experiencing that amazing thing that they want, from moving forward with turning their dream into reality, from really going out there and, and manifesting a life of what they most desire. Because if you don't believe you're worth having it, how can you have it, right? I'm gonna say that again. If you don't believe you're worth having something, how can you have it? You can't, right? You have to believe you're worth that, that dream job. You have to believe you're worth becoming an author, becoming a painter. You have to believe you're worth starting your own business. You have to believe you're worth reconnecting with loved ones. You have to believe you're worth being forgiven. And the list goes on. Another reason is fear of success. This can show up if a person has an underlying fear that they won't be able to sustain their, sustain their success or if they aren't qualified to move forward towards what they deeply want. An example is, let's say there's a person in their 40s and they're in their nine to five job and it's the nine to five job that's making them miserable. And there's a part of them that so badly wants to, I don't know, create a cooking show or, or do something that brings them the ultimate form of joy. But here they are in their 40s and they're telling themselves, I'm too old to start a cooking show. People are gonna think it's dumb if I start a cooking show, or maybe they want to go back to college and completely change gears in their career, but they have the thoughts that I'm too old to go back to college. People are gonna judge me if I'm the oldest one in the class. And again, the list goes on, right? So you could see that person, they'll stay in the nine to five that's making them miserable for no other reason other than they are standing in their own way of being able to move forward towards whatever it is that they want. Another one is misplacing fault. So what I mean by that is sometimes there are people who say, you know, I'm not going to get the job anyway, anyways, or I'm never going to find true love. So because they think I'm not going to get the job and I'll never find true love, they don't move forward with taking the steps necessary to get the job that they want or perhaps to attract the love that they desire. And what happens in scenarios like that is this is a really easy way for the person to blame something outside of them rather than having to take accountability for how they have contributed to the outcome of not getting the job or not attracting true love. And a lot of times, you know, when a person doesn't take accountability, that's their way of, again, keeping themselves safe. Because remember, with taking accountability means vulnerability. And as we all can agree, sometimes vulnerability is really scary. It's uncomfortable. And sometimes it's definitely easier 
to just stay stuck than it is to own your part and move forward no matter what that's going to feel like. Another way, of course, the big kicker, I think for most people is trying to be in control. So again, it feels really, really good to be in control. I've said this many times on other episodes, but as humans, we like to be in control. It feels good to be in control. There's a sense of safety, st- security, and knowing with being in control. And even though, you know, when it comes to self-sabotage, a lot of times, a person will try to control a situation by accepting a negative predicted outcome before it even happens. So in other words, people will predict the worst possible case scenario because then when something bad happens, that puts them in a position to say, well, I already knew that was going to happen. I was prepared for the worst to happen. And, you know, that's a really interesting thing because it's like, was the worst going to happen or did the worst happen? Because you manifested the worst by telling yourself the worst was going to happen, you know? And if you've been following me for quite some time, you know that I'm a big believer that every experience we manifest. And um, while sure, there are things that happen that are far beyond our control, absolutely. But most things are within our control when it comes to our ability to create outcomes and our ability to predict the best or to see the best when it comes to our perceptions, our attitudes, our responses. And so under that category of wanting to be in control, a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> yeah, sure, it feels safe to predict the worst because then when that happens, you can claim you already knew. But imagine how good it would feel to predict the best and then have the best happen, right? That would feel incredible. Another one is fear of failure. So some people believe no matter what they do give or accomplish, it will never be enough. They'll never be good enough. And so that keeps them from pursuing their dreams and their desires. Again, um, you know, when something feels familiar to a person, that can also keep them staying in the same cycles and situations simply because it's comfortable. And you see this happen a lot with people who are in jobs or in relationships, you know, marriages, let's say you've been married for 20 plus years and you're at a point where you're not feeling fulfilled anymore, but you, it's comfortable. It's because it's what you've known for the last 20 years. So you just accept the situation and you stay in it, even though there's a part of you that so badly is craving more, that so badly wants more. And, you know, they, 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 I guess you could say that the enemy, you know, so to speak, is better than the enemy you don't know, right? So I think a lot of times that mentality of, well, I know this, so I'm just going to accept this rather than I don't know this and I'm still willing to move forward towards this new this, right? Again, um, negative self-talk, self-pity, and of course the ego. I think the list for reasons why self-sabotage is a barrier goes on and on. But of course, negative self-talk is a huge one. If you're that person who continues to replay negative scenarios, if you continue to think I can't do it or I'm not good enough or I'll fail, you can see how you're just going to keep holding yourself back. Self-pity is huge. If you're that person who's stuck in a victim state of mind and you come from the perspective of everything bad happens to me, then you could see how you're not going to move forward with doing the things that you want because you're already thinking everything bad is going to happen. And ego, if you're the person who you think you're different, you're unique, you're better, you're more than and even less than, a lot of times people forget that when we play small or when we think we're less than and inadequate, that is absolutely the ego showing up. And and the ego, remember, it shows up as a mask to hide our insecurities, to hide our anxieties, and to hide our fears. And all that does is keep you from growing and evolving. So again, I could go on and on about the reasons why self-sabotage shows up, but I'm sure by now you're wondering, how can you overcome self-sabotage? So first and foremost, the most important part is to become aware of the self-sabotaging behaviors that you have. Identify them. Then you can do something like make a list, actually write out what are the barriers, blocks, and beliefs that are holding you back from having what you truly want. Examine your behaviors in all areas of your life, in your relationships, in your career, your finances, personal goals, your mind, your body, and your spirit. How are you showing up all around? What behaviors do you have that are no longer serving you? Are you procrastinating? Are you holding on to stories from the past that are keeping you angry and maybe even sick to your stomach? 
Are you using drugs and alcohol to escape reality and cope with stress? Are you predicting the worst possible case scenarios? Are you believing the lies when your thoughts tell you you're not good enough or when your family tells you that's crazy, you're never gonna be able to accomplish that? Or maybe when your partner tells you that? Are you overeating due to stress then you feel guilty about it? Or maybe are you restricting your food? Are you not making time for self-care then blaming other people for feeling run down and tired? Do you have excuses for why you can't this and you can't that? What is in your way? We all have heard the quote, don't be your own worst enemy. And that couldn't be more true. I know there was definitely a time in my life when I was hands down my worst enemy. But here's the thing, guys. No one can get in your way unless you let them. No one can make you anything unless you let them. No one can steal your joy. No one can steal your power unless you let them. No one can make you act a certain way unless you choose to react to them. I've been on my healing spiritual path for eight years now, and it surely hasn't been a walk in the park. Even, even up until this present day, there are still times that I'm in my own way, but there is nothing more freeing and empowering than waking up to the realization that you and only you are responsible for who you choose to become. When you actually begin to believe that you are capable of all things and you are limitless, opportunity and possibilities are every single where we choose to see it. I can't explain the energetic shift that happens within you. It's just something you feel. You wake up and you start to feel like a new person. It's like you have new ears, new eyes, just all around new senses. Everything becomes different. But the most important part is don't just think it and believe it. You have to actually <clears throat> embody the fact that you're capable of all things. You have to embrace it. You have to internalize it. You have to feel it in your bones. Know that no matter what happens, no one or nothing can come in your way. You all are so powerful and you can truly be and do anything you want, but it all starts with you. You must first become aware of what behaviors are holding you back. Then you must own the behaviors because they're yours, right? Nobody can make you act a certain way. Own your behaviors. And know that it's no longer acceptable to blame people, places, and things for how we are. And I'm saying this from purely a place of love. It's not acceptable to blame people, places, and things. In fact, when we blame people for who we are, it puts so much pressure and responsibility on someone and people can't change us. Only we can change ourselves. And it's very true when they say, whatever you aren't changing, you're choosing. So become curious about yourself. I think that's the best advice I could ever give you. Rather than judging yourself, shaming yourself, and keeping yourself stuck, be stuck because you come from the place of, why am I still doing this? Why am I this way? Why this, why that? Become curious. Come from the perspective of what? What is this behavior teaching me? What is this behavior trying to reveal to me, right? Trace your behaviors back to your, your, early, your early experiences where you first started to have them because in doing so, that will help you understand your behaviors. And when you understand your behaviors, it becomes easier to accept your behaviors. And when you accept your behaviors, it becomes easier to change your behaviors. So give yourself a chance to grow and to do so with grace. Be gentle on yourself, be loving with yourself, be forgiving with yourself. Everything you need is within you. All you have to do is begin to pay attention. I know it probably sounds too good to be true, but I'm telling you guys <clears throat> where, <clears throat> excuse me, I promise that's not COVID. <laughs> I keep having this dry cough, um, but I think it's just because I'm worried about not coughing. Anyways, back to this episode. So, you know, it might sound too good to be true as far as paying attention and that's all you have to do, but that really, really, really is the kicker. If you are truly paying attention to how you're showing up, then you will be able to identify when you're doing something that's not helping you. And if you're able to identify it, then you're able to change it in the moment. So, you know, when you find yourself falling into old patterns, yes, notice it, but don't stop there. Remind yourself you're doing the best you can, then choose again. That is really important. Choosing again, choosing again and choose what's good for you. Choose what's going to help you. Choose what's going to move you closer to your goals and dreams. And no matter what, starting right now, I invite you to begin affirming, I am good enough, I am worthy, 
I am deserving, I am qualified. In fact, I am overqualified. The world needs me, I need me. I choose love above fear. It's safe to change my behaviors. It's time to change my behaviors. I am allowed to change my behaviors. I allow myself to grow with grace. I am ready for change and really get into a practice of affirming anything that feels good to you. I'll share these in the show notes. So if you want to use them, by all means, use these affirmations. I want you guys to know that I love you so, so much. You're not alone. The journey of healing, while sure it can be very unknown and uncomfortable at times, it is the most beautiful, rewarding journey you could ever, ever go on. So stay your course. Here's to looking in, becoming aware, and then doing something with what you know, because knowledge is wonderful, but applied knowledge is powerful. Be powerful. Thank you for joining me today. If you found today's episode to be insightful and inspiring, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And I kindly ask that you please leave me a review so together we can help the next person. To learn more about my products and services, check out www.themindfulliving.com and come connect with me on Instagram at mindfulliving.now where I share daily inspiration, mindful skills, tips, and more. Until the next episode, stay mindful and always remember the power that lives inside of you.